hello, good morning and welcome to Camilla and I, here somewhere in the New Forest. Anyway, today we've got a choice between either a new location or a new lens. What would you pick? Would you pick a new lens or a new location? Well, keep watching because uh, you might be in for a new lens if you want, or you'll have to really pester me hard for this location. So the new location we've brought you to today is uh, in the new forest. As I say, I'm not going to give away the location because uh, we don't want everybody turning up. And uh, yeah, the new location we've got is this beautiful pond, just uh, exploring it now. But uh, I was here yesterday and I've sussed it out somewhat. We have a, uh, a dog bathing area or horse drinking area, which was, uh, yeah, we'll come on to that later. Anyway, um, here we have a, uh, a sort of vegetation area and uh, interesting backdrop. Hopefully dragonflies perch along there. I know they ply up and down in this area. And then we come on to another area, which is a sort of lily pad area. It's very well maintained this pond. I can't believe it's uh, kept this uh, clean naturally, but uh, perhaps it is. And uh, yeah, look at all these beautiful lilies. All those lilies will be out later on. They close up at night and then open up during the day. Beautiful white lilies. And uh, yeah, an emperor dragonfly was flitting over here yesterday. And we've got this beautiful backdrop of new forest mature trees. Well, there's been a stone chat around. Had a stone chat yesterday in the gorse on the opposite bank. And of course the dragonflies can perch up in the gorse anywhere around the pond and of course also they lay eggs on under the lilies and uh, in the weeds in the pond absolutely superb okay so what would you rather have would you rather have a new lens or a new location like this one what's uh, what's your decision anyway watch on and uh, you may get uh, well you might get one <laughs> one of those choices okay cheers for now well the new lens I suppose uh, better have a chat about that um, we're very lucky one of the few things you get on uh, when you do do a YouTube channel is occasionally people send you free stuff to review and it's not often we get a lens in the post to review and uh, I presume it's ours so I presume I can give it away if not I owe them some money <laughs> anyway TT Artisan are the uh, makers of this lens and uh, it's a uh, wildlife lens question mark 500 millimeter f 6.3 and uh, yeah so uh, yeah it's interesting lens and um, people on Camilla and I, people watching Camilla and I must think wow he's always got the best equipment in the world and uh, how can he possibly go wrong because he's using the latest gear well in this case we're using using the latest free gear that's arrived in the post and uh, this free gear has got a number of limitations so uh, yeah I'll uh, take you over there now and uh, show you the limitations with this lens and why it should be such a challenge to get a shot on Camilla and I of any note with this lens anyway catch you in a sec yeah so a quick lowdown on this amazing TT artisan lens which uh, yeah could be yours okay now basically we've got a beautiful 10 times magnification 500 millimeter well, f6.3 wide open 
and it goes to uh, F32 if we go that far and it's also got unbelievably as you'll realize later unbelievably it's got two extra dispersion elements to prevent ghosting and flare which is quite remarkable in a lens of this stature and also we have a very nice screw-on metal lens hood screw on metal lens hood oh, I've got to screw it back on now which covers an 82 millimeter optic so you could use a polarizer with this lens right now that's the good news that's the good news the bad news is this lens is totally manual it's just like going back to the old days um, some of us remember the old days when you had to manually focus everything because this lens is so reasonably priced we won't say cheap but so reasonably priced is the fact it does not connect to the camera at all we've stuck the a6700 on it today and um, because I didn't think my A93 would probably break the diaphragm or something, the little blades that uh, open up and down. I shouldn't think it's possible to do more than 15 frames per second with this lens. Now, it's also got a rotating collar, but be very careful how you rotate it. And there's no mark on the lens barrel to tell you you're at 90 degrees and this tends to uh, be, a bit flex, uh, be, be a bit flimsy. It has got a foot with the lens but it's not Arca Swiss plate specific so we've got on our own plate on here. Now all we've got is manual focus and um, fortunately we've got focus assist on the back of the A6700. So anything in focus turns up bright yellow. So a really useful camera feature which helps us focus in. So we've only got manual focus and we've only got this control here to set the aperture. Wide open at f6.3, but I've watched a few people using this lens online and I know it's sharpest at f8. So we're going to use it at f8. Also, we have this focusing ring, which is extremely stiff. I'll really tighten that down as well. This focusing ring is really stiff, but it enables us accurately to set our subject in focus at the twist of a dial. Okay. So yeah, those are the key features. It's a very simple lens. Just think manual, 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 and um, you're into this lens. So not what we're used to at all on Camilla and I. But we're gonna try and get a good shot. Um, now this may be a static shot. It may be something just taking off with a bit of luck, dragonfly. Um, but we will see. Anyway, this is the challenge today to get a good shot with this setup. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, keep watching because we've set ourselves quite a challenge today. Ooh. Yeah, so another factor I failed to mention with this lens is that it weighs 1.6 kilograms approximately and um, it's all metal construction but it's definitely not weather sealed so this is definitely a fair weather lens only take it out in bright conditions I would suggest also the guys at TT Artisan also sent me very usefully with this lens is a spotting scope and this is what I was um, first interested in on this product and basically what you do dot sight is actually called 
this basically puts a dot on your subject. So basically we undo the hot shoe like so and expose the hot shoe, put on like raise the sight, whoops, like so. And now if I look through here, I can see a dot being placed on our subject. So it enables us, helps us to focus in. So with this dot sight, it enables us to focus in on the subject just a little bit easier. So now that'll put a dot on our subject and uh, we'll know when we see the dot on the subject, we'll know we've got the subject in the middle of the frame without looking through the viewfinder. But in these bright conditions, I don't think it will show up. So uh, anyway, yep, a dot sight was provided with the kit. So uh, yeah, the dot sight comes, I suppose, with the lens, if you like. Okay, brilliant. TT Artisan dot sight. Anyway, we've got the focus assist in the back of the A6700. So well, I don't think we'll need it, but um, and I think it's too bright to use today. But we'll see. Anyway, interesting feature. I've never had a dot sight before. So uh, there we go. Right. Also, there's absolutely no stabilization, of course, in this lens. It's all manual, 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 manual. Um, we haven't got eight stops of stabilization. So I will be setting twice the focal length, one thousandth of a second minimum, even to get static subjects. Because when pressing the shutter button, you will get barrel. So this lens is an absolutely great test of your old skills and really takes you back to the old days of photography and what it's all about really. Manually focusing, manually setting the aperture, brilliant and you've still got to get the exposure right which of course again fortunately using the modern camera these days the what you see is largely what you get in a modern digital camera so uh, we can tell almost straight away whether we've got the subject and uh, also when I press in on a button it gives it 100% magnification and uh, I can instantly see it's out of focus so uh, hmm okay so we're just waiting for our first subjects to come in really that's one of the beauties of dragonflies you don't have to get up that early in the morning obviously if you want them on stalks and uh, perched up from overnight with dew on then yes, you do want to wake up first thing in the morning. But if you want them in flight or in good light, like we do here on Camilla and I today, then um, yeah, you can turn up ooh, 10 o'clock, 9, 10 o'clock, probably not going to fly much till then because uh, they like it when the temperature rises. Anyway, what I'll do, I'll show you a few shots I got with the A93 and the 300 millimeter and 1.4 teleconverter yesterday. Mostly shot at uh, 1 4,000th of a second. F 5.6, 5, round about that mark, just to keep the wings in focus as well. Uh, auto ISO, so I was going from the pond to the grasses behind, and they're very rapid. And the uh, auto focus I was using yesterday was in flight mode, on the Sony system, so uh, in-flight autofocus. So yeah, I'll show you a few shots you can get with the A93, and that's with stabilization, eight-stop stabilization, and uh, ooh, what else? Just about every bonus going. I insect eye detect, um, which won't apply in this case because we're manually focusing. So I'll just show you what you could get if you had the most expensive equipment. And then, um, yeah, hopefully I'll get something with this, which will be pretty good. Well, I've just been on a wrecky circle of the pond and the stone chat that was posing yesterday posed even better for 
the Artisan 500mm f6.3. So uh, yeah, link to a bit of footage of that. Uh, took a bit of uh, video and a few stills. And uh, as it stayed in the one place for long enough, um, got quite a nice bit of action. So uh, yeah, 1-0 to the Artisan 500. Okay. But still no dragonflies. Um, <coughs> just checking the time. Whoops. Just check the time. Um, yeah, I've just seen my first blue damselfly. So uh, amazing. Yeah, 20 past nine. Temperatures expected to get up to about 24 today, but I'm guessing it's around about oh, 20 at the moment. Anyway, still waiting for those major dragonflies to appear like that emperor yesterday. <sighs> nice. Obviously without any autofocus or any tracking ability, we really struggle to get any in-flight shots. I mean, it is technically possible, but near impossible. Um, you set a distance that uh, an area you know they're gonna fly through, and then potentially you can set that and press the shutter the moment they fly through your set distance. And um, yeah, that would be a very tricky technique. Anyway, also um, another technique we've employed is the delay on the uh, shutter release. We've delayed the shutter release five seconds. This is a, to give the lens barrel a chance to absorb all that shake when we press the shutter button. So we've got a five second delay on our shot. We just smoothly press and then we're mounted on a tripod and we should get a sharp image because a real problem with this lens is vibration through the lens. So uh, yeah, to be avoided, mount it on a tripod, cable release or delay. So uh, yeah. Anyway, we've got the we've got some video of the um, of the emperor as well. No, it's perfectly possible to get your subject, especially if it's in a static position, and you've got this beautiful 500 millimeter of reach. So uh, yeah, well done, artisan. So the elephant in the room, I suppose, is what do you think we paid for this lens? Well. As I say, we got it sent free in the post, but did I pay five? Would I have paid five hundred pounds for this lens? Would I have paid three hundred pounds? Oh, just a second, it's landed again. So, well, pop me there a sec. Yeah, it's just uh, landed again. So we've got another static shot opportunity, and that's the other thing we're doing. We're putting the subject in the middle of the frame because that's the sharpest part of a cheaper lens. Anyway, uh, yeah, cheaper lens. So, £500? No. £400? No. £300 for this lens? Absolutely remarkable. About six times less than the 200 to 600. And, um, cool. about 20 times less than my 300mm. Uh, uh, oh, is that right? I don't know, maths is going first thing in the morning. So, yeah. Uh, six and a half thousand the 300 millimeter and this is just 300 pounds so uh, yeah 20 times oh so 20 times cheaper but obviously you do lose all the capabilities you get with a modern lens these days so uh, yeah but to get to uh, 10 times magnification 10 times 50 millimeter this is absolutely wonderful so uh, anyway yeah if you want to try 500mm, um, drop a comment and uh, let me know why you need this 500mm. Are you just starting out in wildlife photography? Dragonflies, oh, right. mostly, yeah, I know it's... Uh, yeah. Well, call me a coward, but I must admit I didn't want to, didn't want to argue with that chap with his two dogs. And uh, it really put you in a bit of a spot. I mean, yesterday I did tell two people to uh, kindly put their dogs on a lead, please. Um, but that guy, obviously, his dogs were going in, regardless of what you said. And uh, as he was about six foot, and um, at one point he was probably built like Charles Atlas, I thought I'd better leave him alone. And uh, we just had a little chat. 
So uh, anyway, the regulations in the new forest are a little bit vague. Basically, they're not, dogs are not supposed to, to disturb birds, wildlife and deer. And they don't really specify not to go in the ponds, which, um, well, I think we're missing a point here. <laughs> I'd like a big notice up, as the people rudely pointed out to me yesterday, there's no notice up saying no dogs allowed in the pond. And indeed this section here, where I've set up, specifically to uh, stop the disturbance in some respects. But this is specifically sort of set up. Obviously animals, deer, etc. do go down to drink into this bit here. But, um, and also it does say in the code that you have to be considerate to other users of the uh, forest. So I don't know in any shape nor form how that last interaction was consideration to a person who's photographing dragonflies opposite. But um, these dog owners have rules unto themselves. Um, they make up their own rules. Their dogs are their favourite pet. Um, and uh, you get in the way between them and their pet having a cool off or a bath or a drink, well, you're at fault. Um, sod the wildlife sod the delicate eco-structure in the pond, that doesn't matter. The important thing is that my dog cools off. So, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter what you say to people, they're going in regardless. And, uh, and they don't show no consideration at all to the wildlife in the pond. As we all know, a lot of the pond life happens below the surface of the pond. So the moment you go in and start disturbing it, you're disturbing a whole ecosystem. Anyway, rant over, back to the video. <laughs> but a good example. Yeah, so would you choose a new lens or, or a new location? Uh, one as good as this, I would suggest. Um, yeah, well worth a trade, I should think. Anyway, what would you give for a new lens, 300 pounds, or a new location? Absolutely superb. Anyway, comments below please. Uh, your best, best excuse as to why you should own the 500mm and then I'll find out if uh, TT Artisan will let me give the lens away. And uh, yeah, I suspect they will. But um, anyway, yeah, go to a deserving home. Somebody who needs 500mm of reach just starting out perhaps, or they want to try the focal length of 500mm before buying that big purchase. Okay, well thanks for watching an episode of Camilla and I. Have a good one. Bye for now.